all right so next we'll start with re-entry so re-entry name only says re means again entry so here entry is for the impulses these re-entries we can classify it into two parts into two types first one is anatomically defined re-entry and secondly functionally defined re-entry so we'll start our discussion with anatomically defined re-entry and the classical example for anatomically defined re-entry is wolf parkinson white syndrome now we know that ev node is the bridge between atria and ventricle this ev node connects the atria with the ventricle but in wolf parkinson white syndrome there is an extra connectivity between the atria and the ventricle this is known as bundle of kent you know what happens as such whenever this sa node fires all the impulses are will be spreading all over to the atrial part next via the av node the impulses will be passing to the ventricles as such we know first to the axial part and uh, first to the apex and then to the axial part okay so how the impulses are moved all over the ventricles means first the ventricles moves to the apex and then to the axial part and this septum this is the septum and over here the impulses die out as such as such this sh should happen but because of this extra thing because of this bundle of kent because of this bundle of kent there are chances that impulse may sweep and move back to upward to the atrial part so this is the problem with this bundle of kent so we know that the now as this sa node fires the impulses will be spreading all over to the atria next the impulse has got two options either it can move to the av node or it can move to the bundle of kent so which track it should follow obviously it will follow to that route where the cells have completed its refractoriness means the uh, sodium channels are under resting stage obviously to those track it will follow now one more important thing that you should know over here is in our heart there are few myocardial cells that rapidly uh, conduct the current and there are few myocardial cells that conduct the current very slowly like suppose this is the atrial or ventricular cells and this is its action potential now for this atrial cells or the ventricular cells to cause depolarization it requires the sodium channel that is the voltage gated sodium channel that causes depolarization influx of sodium ion causes depolarization of atrial and ventricular cells and these sodium channels are very fast very fast means it causes depolarization very quickly therefore atrial cells or ventricular cells are said to be very fast conductor of impulses they will conduct the impulse very quickly similarly when you check out sa node or av nodal cells and suppose this is uh, their action potential in sa nodal cells or av nodal cells or perkins cells in these cells to cause depolarization it requires the calcium channel the calcium influx will cause depolarization in case of sa node av node or perkins cells and this is very much slow these calcium channels are very much slow means it will take more time to cause depolarization therefore more time to conduct the impulse so you can say cells such as sa node av node or perkins cells or any cells where depolarization is taking place because of influx of calcium ion these are very slow conductor of impulses but cells such as atrial cells and ventricular cells and any cells where sodium channel are responsible to cause depolarization they will cause conduction of impulses very quickly now we are talking about this bundle of kent that whether it is a fast conductor of impulse or a slow conductor of impulse this bundle of kent comes under the category of a fast conductor hence the impulse which is generated from the sa node it can move very much quickly via the bundle of kent but very slowly via the av node so now suppose the sa node fires and next after firing 
it can move to either the AV node or the bundle of Kent. Suppose AV nodal cells are still refractory and it approaches to the bundle of Kent where the cells has overcome the refractoriness means the sodium channel is now at the resting stage and they can take up the another impulse. Now from the bundle of Kent the impulses sweep down and suppose Meanwhile, the AV nodal cells has also overcome the refractoriness means the sodium channel is now at the resting stage so even they can take up the impulse and at one particular time the both the impulses coming from both the direction will meet at one particular point and they will die out means here no ventricular arrhythmia occur everything will be normal just the conduction pathway will be different that's it but everything will be normal there won't be any ventricular arrhythmia taking place over here therefore patients with wolf parkinson white syndrome will not show any sign of arrhythmia as such the problem arises when there is an ectopic foci so this star represents an ectopic cell means it is irritated cell and it is irritated because of some kind of ischemia or digitalization now suppose this SA node fires and the impulses spreads all over to the atria. Now you know this impulse can travel either via the AV node or either via the bundle of Kent. Whichever cells are uh, now at the sodium channel are at now at the resting stage. Suppose both the uh, ways, both AV node as well as the bundle of Kent, the, both cells have got their sodium channel at resting stage means both can take up the impulse. Now suppose uh, now that problem does not arises when both the uh, uh, part the AV node as well as the bundle of Kent sodium channel are at resting stage. The problem arises when one is resting and one uh, is at inactive stage and the movement of the impulse is unidirectional. Suppose over here in this case the, cell, the bundle of Kent their sodium channel is now at the inactive stage and the AV node their sodium channel is now at the resting stage so this AV node will take up the impulse okay and it will move back upward obviously this is the normal movement from the AV node it should move to entire ventricle first to the apex okay this is the apex first it should move to the apex and then upward like this should be the moment and this septum this is the septum over here the impulses should die out as such normally this should happen but you know what happens because of this because of this bundle of Kent the impulses will move upward and it touches this ectopic foci because of which an another impulse and another wave of impulse will be initiated this is known as re-entry or this movement is known as the circus movement. So I believe you people understood what exactly is meant by re-entry. Re-entry means again as such the impulse should die out over here into the septum. It should die out over the septum. But because of this extra bundle of Kent, the, the impulses are moving again upward and because of this ectopic foci, this is also very much important. If ectopic foci was not there, there won't be any ventricular arrhythmia as such. But because of this ectopic foci, re-entry has been taken place or you can say a circus movement has been taken place. See normally SA node fires at 0.8 seconds. Every 0.8 seconds the SA node fires, therefore it fires at every minute 72 times okay we know SA note beats at the rate of 72 times per minute but the the velocity of this circus movement is 0 0.3 seconds okay one cycle is completed one circus movement is completed at every 0 0.3 seconds that means one cycle 0 0.3 seconds 10 cycle will take just 3 seconds, 100 cycle 30 seconds and 200 cycles in 60 seconds. So in 1 minute the circus movement will be moving at the rate of 200. Okay, 200 times per minute. Whereas for SA node it was taking 72 times, it is beating 72 times per minute. It is initiating the impulse 72 times per minute. So what is the great difference? Okay, this for SA node it is 72 times per minute. 
and over here this this entire circus movement it is taking 200 times per minute so you can say what a great ventricular arrhythmia is been taking place over here now suppose this is any of your myocardial cell and it is from this point the impulses are been released and it will spread all over the myocardium okay this is a normal myocardium cell without any abnormality now suppose an another myocardial cell again uh, the same point from which impulses are been released and then spread throughout the area here there is a dead cell uh, an area which is dead which is not working which cannot take up the impulse now the impulse released from this green point this particular point it may move either to the left side or to the right side suppose it moves to the left side because the cells on the right side are still under refractoriness the sodium channels are under still under the inactive stage so the impulses will be moving like this meanwhile the cells on the right side has recovered from the refractoriness and they also take up the impulse and at one particular point they will meet and the impulses will die out so here there is no problem as such and one more important thing this movement here you can see this movement movement of this side this is known as anterograde movement so anterograde movement should be taking place okay so this like this movement and like this movement this is anterograde movement if movement happens like this this is known as retrograde movement retrograde movement will be of problematic okay anterograde movement is good this is all anterograde movement this is anterograde movement if the movement happens upward reverse this is a retrograde movement okay now now next we shall see a third situation that will actually produce a re-entry suppose the same myocardial cell with a point from where the impulses are being released and spread throughout there is a dead area and plus in addition there is an ischemic area now suppose the impulse generated it may go to left side or to the right side suppose imagine on the right side the cells are still under the inactive state and it starts from the left side okay it will move like this anterograde movement and then retrograde movement happens and after this the ischemic area the irritated area will get excited and it will start producing a second movement which is a circus movement okay this is a circus movement so why this circus movement this re-entry has been occurred this re-entry occurred because uh, first of all any piece of myocardium the if the impulses fails to move from both the side the there may be chances of re-entry okay in both the side it should move as such the impulse which is generated from here it should move to both the side if one side fails if the movement of the impulse is unidirectional unidirectional then there may be chances of this um, uh, re-entries okay this is the very much important thing the movement should never be unidirectional if the movement of the impulses are unidirectional then it may lead to production of re-entry okay so any piece of myocardium if the impulses fails in one pathway so impulses will be moving unidirectionally and after moving unidirectionally it will approach to the dysfunctional pathway the dysfunctional pathway means that ischemic pathway and and suppose that pathway is now recovered and available for excitation causing the circus movement so here you saw this one is this one is the retrograde pathway okay this is the retrograde direction which is the main problem for causing this re-entries so this is about the anatomical re-entry next we'll talk about the functional re-entry now suppose this is your myocardial cell this is the point from which the impulses are released and spread all over and suppose this is a dead area as such so normally what happens you know what you expect that impulses are released from left side and means impulses are released and it may move to the left side or to the right side suppose again the same problem of unidirectional from the right side these cells are still under the sodium channels are still under inactive set so it will follow to the left side and it will be moving and proceeding forward this was expected but since this is a functionally defined re-entry some functional problem is there and that functional problem is this cell is producing 
after depolarization and that after depolarization will be sweeping causing the circus movement or causing re-entry so this is what happens in a functional re-entry and i hope you people understood the pathogenesis of cardiac arrhythmia that is both imp uh, abnormal impulse generation and abnormal impulse conduction so this was all about pathogenesis of cardiac arrhythmia in my next video we will be talking about the pharmacology of antiarrhythmic agents i hope you people found this video helpful and thank you for watching